Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Jaspreet and today's video is a request that I've been getting over and over again on my YouTube channel, on Instagram, on Facebook. A lot of people have been asking me how to create this bisque mold with the pearl or the bead detail and I've used this in a couple of my projects recently and a lot of people have come back and asked you know how to make this. Um, it is a very simple process. I'll show you how to make this apart from this sprig mold i'll show you a few other examples of base sprig molds that you can make what are the things you can use to make those sprig molds and also a few examples of how you can use them in your work so let's just get started okay let's start with first looking at some of the examples of the bisque sprig molds that i've made here this is the one that's got a lot of attention and now that i've broken it i'm going to make another one though i can still use this one i'll demonstrate making one of these for the video today now this was obviously made using this string of pearls now this is just you know a cheap string of pearls not your expensive pearls so i use these to make this string then i have used i don't know if you've seen these little um, wooden thingies that you get in sets of five or something so i have used these to make a bunch of these again i have a, many different designs in this so I made a butterfly, a wing, some kind of leaf, another leaf, a flower, another leaf. So all of these can be used to make these sprig molds. And I'll show you what they look like. But I use these kind of, you know, flat wooden, I'm not sure, entirely sure what they're called. I'll, I'll be listing all these things for you so you can easily, you know, look up and see uh, and find them easily. So probably we'll make a few which I haven't, I don't have these. The Christmas theme ones I don't have. So I'll probably make a bunch of these today in the class and we'll see so they have a lot of different designs you can pick whatever so this is uh, another kind of bisque mold uh, bisque sprig mold that i've made then i've made some with these wooden decorative thingies uh, usually they're put on the sides of you know people use them to add to their dressers or doors and things like that so i just used these press them in clay and then made these bisque molds now these you can use again on your platters on the sides for decorating as sprigs <laughs> you can use any of these so i've made a bunch of these i have many more but these are just some examples of things that i've made with these right then there's another one which is you know if you have kids or have toys <laughs> or you steal other people's kids toys and you can make you know some molds like this as well so i made a little flamingo mold with this now you can use anything which has some kind of thickness to it to make these sprig molds now something like a lace or a doily is not thick enough to turn into a mold. They can be used to create texture for sure. But for sprigs, you do need something with a little bit more thickness to them. So that you know when you put them in clay, you're able to get an impression that's deep enough that you can use them as a spray. So that is the plan. Let's get started. I'm going to be using some recycled clay to make this. And... Let me bring in my clay and we'll start there. Now I am using a darker clay body because this is the only recycled clay I have in the studio right now. I didn't want to use my fresh slabs to make these uh, sprig molds. I'm using a recycled clay block. Now this is darker clay. Honestly, it will not matter because once it's fired and, and is at base stage, it will not really you know, transfer or <laughs> to any other lighter color clay or anything. So you can use any kind of recycled clay to make these sprig molds. Again, you don't have to use recycled clay because these are not going to be final pieces. These are just things, tools that I'm using in my studio. I like to use recycled clay and not fresh clay. I mean, there's no logic, no reason to it, just your preference, okay? Now what I'm trying to do here is just, this is a block already wedged and everything. So this, because I want to make another one of these bead molds, I need a longer stretch of thicker clay. Now, whenever you're making these kind of sprig molds, which are going to be bisque ware and used as tools, it's a good idea to make them thicker so that when you're pressing your clay in them, they don't break and also making sure that they are straight. Clearly, this one wasn't straight. So when I was trying to press my clay in, it cracked here. So make sure that the clay is thicker though this is thick it wasn't straight enough and it ended up breaking like i said this is still usable i can still use it and i still do but because this is a request and because this is one thing that a lot of people have asked me to demonstrate how to make i'm going to be making this here so i'm just trying to thin down my block thin down as in making it into a narrower block just pressing it in a little bit throwing it on the board okay and then we 
cut a little portion off i'm going to bring in my i'm going to use my this cutter tool to just cut the slab off okay and i'm not being very precise here i'm just taking a little bit of this off now i'm going to start thinning it now to thin it i will use two of those measuring sticks and i'm going to be using the half inch strip because i need this to be thick right so i'm going to bring in my sticks so here are the measuring sticks or the paint mixing strip strips and this is the one that i found which is a quarter of an inch in thickness so i'm going to be using two each on each side so that gives me half inch thickness on both sides i'm going to place them here on the two sides okay and then start rolling my clay I don't need it to be so far apart. I'm just bringing it in. Okay, we start rolling it and a couple of rolls in one direction, then just lift, flip, and go again. Because I want it to be a longer form, I'm not rolling it, um, I'm not moving it this way and rolling. I want it to be long, so I just continue doing this. But I keep turning it because. That you make sure that it's not sticking to the board underneath okay so here i have my piece done this is the thickness this is about a quarter of an inch thickness okay i'm going to leave it there to remove my strips i'll quickly just compress the clay especially the side that's going to be your top Okay, just compressing this a little bit and I may just cut it a little bit because I don't need it to be this broad, this thick. Okay, I'm just using my this is surgical knife, works great with clay, just using that and again as you can see I'm just eyeballing it, I'm not really using a straight edge to cut this, just freehand cutting. Okay, smoothing out the edges a little bit if you need to. Again, I'm smoothing it out because it is a tool that I'm going to be using over and over in my studio. So might as well make it well. I'm pressing the inside, bring off the edge. Okay, now this is quite thick. If you want, you can thin it down a little bit more, but I'm going to leave it at that. I'm just going to clean off the backside as well, smoothing it out. Okay. I think we are good now. This is nice and smooth and flat. Now, what we're gonna do is, these are the beads I'm going to use to press in clay. Now, if your clay is really, really soft, add a little bit of cornstarch onto your beads. If it isn't, you don't need to. But I'm assuming a lot of beginners here. I'm gonna add a little bit of cornstarch. So that's my cornstarch. I use this fluffy brush. You can add it to the clay surface as well if you want okay this is just to act as a resist so that when you're pulling the beads out from the slab it's easy to remove and it's not sticking to the clay inside okay let's just place it you actually you can actually make two if you have uh, beads with two different thicknesses like the pearls are thicker different thicknesses and you can use two different you can make two of these since i'm just making one i'm going to place this here okay press the first bead in go in with the second and i'm just holding on to this okay so i'm not stretching the string out like this i'm just holding on to it and then i'm lightly pressing these in to give them their places spots to rest okay but release it from this side don't keep it too stretched because otherwise they'll not go in completely okay just pressing pressing now how deep am i pressing them any of you has that question so i'm pressing them in quite well in the sense that i can't you know press it in with a roller because that will completely press them in so i need them to be at let me show you can you see that 
So they are almost, I think, a little more than halfway in there. Okay. Ideally, when you do this, place this on a board on which it's going to dry. So that you have to move it again and again. So I'm going to bring in a board. Okay. All right. So I'm going to place it here. All done. And then one by one, start lifting the pearls. Don't go in one go. Don't try to, you know, um, peel it off in one go. Just one by one remove these and there you go right so that's a little pearl sprig mold done it's as simple as that you know now all you have to do is make sure this dries flat i'm going to dry it i'll cover it with plastic and then i'll put some kinds of weight maybe another board on top and weigh that down so that it dries completely flat and if you want you can fix these little uh, thingies here like the string that's captured here if you want you can you know uh, clean that up I'm not going to do that because it doesn't make much difference. To be honest, it doesn't even show when you do the actual spring. So it's okay. I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to leave it at this and let it set up. So that's our one mold done. Let's move on to the other pieces here. Okay. For this, uh, because these are smaller ones, my slab is going to be a quarter of an inch thickness. I'm not going to make it any thicker than that uh, because these are like smaller sizes. So it doesn't matter. Only for the longer one or something that's really deep. Like something like this, you'll need a much thicker slab. Okay, so here's a small slab. I'm going to clean up my uh, rib here. Just clean this off. For these kind of pieces, what I'll usually do is take a slab. Okay, this could be bigger than this as well. Okay, so you add a little bit of cornstarch. I'm going to place this guy here and then press it in. Now for this one, you can go all the way in. This one you need to go all the way in to get a nice deep uh, mold. Okay, so that's one. I'm going to place multiples and then I'll cut out smaller pieces here. Okay, so there goes another one. Okay, this is the same. We do the leaf here. I'm just trying to leave a little bit of space between them so that there's area around these that I can cut if I need to. If not, I can leave it there. So you can actually make something like a theme, like you can do all the Christmas ones together in one place instead of, you know, on different slabs. But I'm just showing you how this is done. So for these ones, you're going all the way in, just pressing it in. Okay, that's done. Now we start pulling them out. If you want, you can cut out the sizes. I think I'll just leave these in, doesn't matter. Just lift one side and slowly dig this out. Okay, that's one. Okay. There you go. So if it is something which has too much too many cutouts like in the leaf it may be a little bit more tricky so try removing it from all the sides slowly like i'm doing here okay all right yeah so here if you see this one got stuck in here uh, the clay stuck in here. I don't know if you can see. Yeah, there you can see that, right? The clay stuck in there. That can happen sometimes. It's okay. I'm going to let this be. Now, ideally do this <laughs> again on a slab so that it can dry slowly on top of this, right? So we've made a few more here. That's how we use these guys. Now I'm thinking I'll use this roller to make a sprig with a long flower leaf wine. So I'll be using again another slab. I will be using a rolling pin. Only because I need a longer slab of clay, like thick slab of clay. Okay. Right. So we have this here. Again, if you want, you can cut out the sides, make it a little bit more 
symmetrical china. It's a tool you have to use in your studio. It's up to you how you want to make it. I'm just cleaning off the sides a little bit. Okay. And because this is going to be my top where I'll have the sprig mold, I'm going to just clean it up. I'm just cleaning up the sides a little bit. Okay. Now, because this is a wooden roller, I'm not going to bother with adding any cornstarch. But, and I have used it multiple times in place, so I'm okay with it. But if you want, you can use cornstarch. Yeah, I'm going to place it here. And then I'm going to press it fairly deep so that I get a good impression. Like the entire thing has to go in. And it's okay, the clay is stretching a little bit because you're pressing the roller. That's fine. So that's another one. Again, I did not place it on a board before I rolled it in. So here's the second rolled one that we've made. All right, let's quickly test some of these little molds that we've made. Now this is still, uh, this is quite close to bone dry actually, almost bone dry. I'm going to give it a try. I'm not going to push it too hard, but just see if it works just for this video. Otherwise, I would let it, you know, dry completely this part, only then use it. And we'll probably try a couple of these as well, just to see, you know, how they look. So again, I'm using some recycled clay because we just test. So let's start with this, maybe. Okay, I have to be really gentle with this. Okay, maybe we'll try with the bell. Now, I'm going to lift it up here because I don't want to press the whole thing and break it. I am being very gentle because this is still, like I said, almost bone dry. So I'm just placing my clay scrap here and pressing it down. I don't think I'm going to push it any further. Now, this is really soft clay, so I'm able to push it a little bit. And you can see I've flattened it. It started this thick and I've flattened it quite a bit. So I've pressed it quite a bit. Let me see if I'm able to remove this. Oh, there you go. That's a little bell sprig. So you can now cut it off. So if you remember in the last video that I did on um, making and attaching sprigs to the moon vase, I used the sprig mold and then I used a metal drip to scrape the clay off. Like for example, there was, let me just show you. One more time. For example, if I put the clay on here, I used a metal spray scraper then, a metal rib, to scrape off the clay and get a nice flat uh, sprig, right? You can do that, but because these are handmade, you may not get a completely flat surface. So what I like to do, like you can do this. I mean, you can give it a try and see how far you can push it. But the other way that you can use this to make sprigs is, I'm not going to push this any further. <laughs> is to you know get a nice impression of the texture the spray get the spray and then use your clay knife or your needle tool to cut this out from clay because i feel that with the handmade sprigs it may be a little bit difficult to scrape the entire back side off it may be a little tricky to scrape it completely off the mold here because it's not completely flat You can always cut out your sprigs like this. Again, slip and spore at the back and then push them onto your piece and, you know, have your sprig done. So this is one that we made the other day. Let me see. Let me try and get this one and see if I get a nice impression. I'm just flattening this out a little bit more. Okay. I am holding on to it in my hand. and I'm being very gentle with this because I'm just testing on a bone dry piece. There you go. That's again a little spray. You can cut it out, and that's your spray, right? So, this is the one that we made. Let's try some of these and see how they look. Honestly, I haven't tried these yet. So, this is actually a mold where you can get the whole thing done, but I'm just going to make one side, use one side to make a little spray thing and see what that looks like, okay? This is already bisque fired, so I can be a little bit more aggressive with it. I'm 
and then very gently releasing the clay. It comes off easily without breaking the neck of the flamingo. Neck off. Ah, okay, there you go. So that's your flamingo mold. Of course, this is not as smooth as I'd like it to be. Probably the clay was a little uh, drier, but you can always smooth it out. I can just cut off the sides here. Okay, yes, you can clean it up a little bit more, but once it's a little stable, so that's your little flamingo <laughs> mold. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Again, I'm just holding on to this and pressing my slab in. I'm pressing it in nicely and then just very lightly peel it off. There you have it. You can again just cut across the sides and I'll do that to show you. So when you use a needle tool, you will see that the needle tool actually tears through the clay. So you get a lot of these uh, little clay crumbs, but here's another one. Okay, let's try one last, this one. I like this a lot. I'm gonna use this one, okay. Yeah, I'm just using a slab and then pressing it in. Now these are really thin ones. I'm not pressing them hard on the table because they'll most likely break because I've made the really thin slabs, uh, the sprig molds are made with really thin slabs, but you can always use them like this. Hold them in your hands and then press your clay in. And whenever you're making sprig molds, use softer clay so that you get a nice deep impression. Okay, once I'm happy with my pressing, I'm going to release this. Ah, look at that, that'll be a beautiful border or even a nice handle yeah, on the side of the pot. So beautiful. There you have it. This could be on the side of a pot, like a handle, you know, something like this on the side of a pot. Right. So that's how we make our own sprig molds and make some sprigs using those. Let me quickly show you some examples of how I use these sprig molds that we have made myself, especially the pearl string one. That's my favorite and most used. Some simple examples are these you saw in one of the film openings. I just made these for the edge rim. Similarly for this bowl here, and it just adds an extra bit of cuteness or elegance. Another one here. These are all made with that string thingy, string pearly. Same here, okay. These also you've seen again, simple platter with a little pearl string detail. Here's another one, right? And this is a paint palette that I made with again the same pearly thing on the edge. I just clay pipe the glaze off, and here's another one on the inside, right? Um, Apart from this, I use this kind of a mold. I've created sprigs with this kind of a mold to make this here and also these smaller ones for a smaller mold, smaller version of this for these. So you can use them in a lot of different ways. I have used them on other platters as well. It's just that I don't have any of those in stock right now, but these are a really beautiful additional, you know, decorative element on your pieces, especially the one I think this is such a simple little addition and it looks so pretty I really love this one so yeah, that's how I view some of these so that's all I have for you this week I hope you enjoyed the video if you have any requests anything that you'd want to see please let me know in the comments below and if you like the video please like subscribe share and I'll see you next week bye